go see it. That's so much better. Here's another brand new song.
consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays.
So it was about a year ago. I thought it was just about a year. And uh, we were just thrilled to death to be asked to come back and celebrate this great Sunday. Let me introduce the guys to you real fast. Over on the keyboard this morning, uh, this is uh, something new to us. And he's been here about three, I guess three weeks now. And uh, he is 29 years old. Yeah, who was right? I have <laughs> Folks, I have food in my refrigerator. So <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's all the way from Boaz, Alabama. I want you to give a nice welcome to Josh. <laughs> Let me get all the new guys out of the way. Somebody said that when we got here this morning, um, they said, he don't look like the guy in the post. <laughs> I have never seen somebody spend as much time in front of the mirror. <laughs> and I have yet to figure out what he's trying to fix. Because I'm perfect, right? <laughs> right. That's it. Well, this, by the way, any Seminole fans in the house? Just... <laughs> I'm from Georgia, so I don't get to do that often. Go no ones. <laughs> now, we'll expect you to pay attention to me one time. <laughs> We will expect you to scream that loud when it's a spiritual time. You know? <laughs> yeah. but this, this young man is all the way from a little town called Dahlonega, Georgia. He's been with us for four weeks and doing a great job. Thank you welcome Dustin Singer. This young man, of course, is no stranger. He's been part of this ministry for eight years now. He is uh, from a little town on the uh, outskirts of North Carolina in South Carolina called Lancaster, South Carolina. Give Greg Gaynor a nice welcome. To you. <laughs> My name is Brad Scott. I call Greensboro, North Carolina home, and I'm going to feel just a little bit left out if y'all don't make me feel welcome too. <laughs> Song. We're trying to do some new stuff for you today, and I love this song. This song kind of gets down a little bit, but I love songs that talk about faith, and here's a good one. See if you like this. Yeah. 
Josh play a piano solo? Hey. Oh, that was that was sad. <laughs> you don't like pianos, do you? Yeah. And so what we're we're gonna do a, a little segment of uh, convention style music. If you don't know what convention style music is, it's got a unique sound to it. And uh, Josh is an excellent convention style piano player. Do a little bit of that. So I'm 
a, a fantastic uh, convention style piano player. So we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do something out of the old Redback uh, Church of God hymn book. Uh, the best, that was great, I don't know, it must have corroded over time. <laughs> but I love this, every song in that book is great. Good convention style, four part harmony, syncopated rhythms, all the cool stuff that the convention style has. So we're going to do, I know you haven't been here long, and uh, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge for you, which a lot of things are a challenge for you. <laughs> but, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a verse and a chorus, verse and a chorus, first and third, and then when we get to the next to last chorus, Instead of singing the words to our part, we're going to do the shape notes or the do re mi, the solfege, whatever you want to call it. So, did they teach you that in college? They tried. They tried. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do, we're going to do it exactly the way it's written in this book, no deviation. And Josh is going to get a, give us a good old fashioned four tenths style intro. Yeah, I like that. Pilgrims for Jesus, we are happy. Don't ever walk up here like that again. 
and steal our thunder, okay? <laughs> no, I, I appreciate this fellow right here, but I want, I want to throw something on you. I know you don't know this song. I don't even know if you can sing. <laughs> Believe it or not, that makes it better. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, so you, you don't, that's bad when these people quickly yell, no, no. <laughs> so what I want you to do, I know you don't know the song, uh, but test your microphone, talk into it, make sure it's all right. That's, that's exactly what we need right there. So, uh, I need you to sing tenor part. So, and next time, next time, if you would, wear a suit, okay? <laughs> uh, you're going to sing in a quartet. You guys go away. Stay. What I want you to do is stand over here on this far side, not way over there. But they always take you so literally. <laughs> this is quartet formation. We're going to do tenor, lead, baritone, and bass. And I'm going to sing the bass part on this old Lefebvre song. Now, now what are y'all laughing at? <laughs> well, is he doing something that goes on? Folks, this is why I don't work with preachers. <laughs> so what, I know you don't know words or anything, but why don't you do is just do whatever they do. This is going to be, you remember, uh, I'm trying to think of something that this would be similar to from your era. Uh, you remember Gladys Knight and the Pips? On this song, I'm Gladys Knight and y'all the Pips. <laughs> So, so this is the bass thing that feature, so you just do whatever they do, and if you don't know the words, it's an old choir trick, just say watermelon, 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 over and over, and they'll never know the difference. So here's an old quartet song called I'm a Boy. See if you like this.
You ever heard the phrase, if looks could kill? Yeah. I would have been a dead man that, that evening that we'd done that because I called him up there and he was not going to budge. So I, I think that's fun. He, he, made, he made the best of a bad situation. I'm glad, from what they were saying, I'm glad your microphone was not on. We, I grew up in the, in the church singing a lot of the old hymns. My dad's a minister of music at my home church, has been so, I guess, for about 40 years that he's been doing it and, uh, and I, I love that he instilled in me a love for the great old hymns of the church and I love new songs there's nothing wrong with new songs but there's something about having a good foundation and uh, we would sing this song growing up and I, I love the words even as a kid but you know, sometimes you listen to a song when you're younger and you don't really grasp it until one day the light bulb comes on in your head when you're about 38 years old and you say Wow, that song, what, what that song had to say. Well, we sang this song in my church growing up, and, and I, I hated the melody. I thought I had the most atrocious, ugly melody. It just didn't fit the beauty of the lyric. And uh, we went to the studio and recorded a, our worship album. And uh, th although this was not a new worship song, it, it definitely fits in that vein. So I told our producer, I said, is there something we can do to this to just kind of bring it into the 21st century just a little bit and make that ugly melody go away? And uh, one of the most beautiful songs ever written, I think, it's called Blessed Redeemer. I want you to listen to words.
Isn't it good to know this morning that God loves us? Amen. In such a hate-filled world, it just seems to grow more and more hate-filled every day. We should take comfort in knowing that the God of the universe loved us enough to send His only Son to pay the supreme sacrifice for you and for me. He didn't deserve it, but He took our place. I want y'all to sing. Y'all have some bit this morning. You need to be ashamed of you. <laughs> but everybody knows, oh, how well, loves you and me. The song we ended with, middle of it. I want you guys to sing that with me. Oh, how he loves you.
Greg and I were privileged through that organization to go to Haiti. And uh, I'm, I'm a comfort zone kind of person. And when I get out of it, sometimes it's not good. And I, I didn't know what to expect when we went down there. And, uh, you know, I, I was kind of laid back. But I learned about what love really means. It doesn't matter what the color of our skin is. It doesn't matter where we are geographically. When a kid comes up to you, throws their arms around you, crawls up in your lap with their snotty nose and their wet bottom, <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. And I, I love what this organization does and I love what they stand for. And if you would, give this three, three and a half minute video here. I would invite attention if you would. One morning, Everett Swanson was out walking when he saw a tree collecting rags from the doorways and the alleys. He watched the workers kick the piles of rags, presumably to ensure they were free of rats. It was only when he saw a small limb extend from one of the bundles that he realised they were not collecting rags, but the bodies of street children who had died overnight. to rescue children from poverty in Jesus' name. This marked the beginning of the work of compassion. The work of compassion supports over <coughs> 1 million children in 24 countries. And yet there is so much more to do. We've only just seen the tip of the iceberg. education, food, health care, and a tour about the great love of Christ. Many of us I know already sponsor children, but perhaps there's room for one more in your family. Or maybe you know someone else who can sponsor a child. All I know is that together, we really can make a difference. Today, you and I can help fulfill the dreams these children have for their own lives. It's not much more than a dollar a day to make this happen. We are so truly blessed in this country. If you're sitting here in the sanctuary this morning, you've accepted the Lord, you've been doubly blessed. If you don't believe, maybe take a quick trip outside the border. And you'll find that even on our worst day, how truly blessed we are. We individually have sponsored a child for almost two years. And then as a ministry, we sponsored a fourth child. And we thought it'd be real neat on this trip this past January to Haiti to pick up a fifth child as a sponsorship because the Lord has truly blessed our ministry. And we want to, you know, so often we're going to churches and churches just sit on a fat checking account. And that's not what the Lord has called us to do. He's called us to go out, minister to the needs of those that need help. And so we sponsored a fifth child. Her name is Ashley. I was so heartbroken to find out the circumstances surrounding that particular family. A single mom with two girls. During the earthquake, their house was demolished. They had no help. So she just tied a tarp to the side of what was left of their house. And that's what they've been living in since the earthquake. And so it was our privilege to be able to go and meet Ashley, take her a bag full of stuff, and say, you know what, we love you. Even though we've never met you before, we love you through the Lord. And she's become our fifth child. 
And what that means is for about a bucket a day, we sponsor her. We help feed her. We help clothe her. We help educate. But the most important thing that Compassion does is they teach these children about the Lord Jesus Christ and that through Him, they can overcome any obstacle that life throws at them, even the endless cycle of poverty. So if you've always wanted to do something extra, I know that you guys do a lot with missions, but this is something that you can do on an individual level. I've had youth groups, I've had ladies auxiliary groups, I've had men's groups stop by and pick up a packet. It does not matter, but what matters is you are reaching out to a child that would otherwise have no home. So stop by the table. If you do nothing else this morning, pick up a packet. It's the best thing that you will ever do. I tell folks we're not begging for your money, but what I am doing is offering you the opportunity to be so blessed to the Lord for giving a child hope. And it's our little way of saying thank you this morning. We'll give you any choice of seed that we have on the table. I know it's not a lot, but it's our little way of saying thank you for truly making a difference in a child's life. Time. 
to go to church to do the Church of God over in Inverness. And they finally decided after several years of doing that that uh, they needed a Church of God on this side of the county. So they opened their empty house that was there on their property up and uh, a church began. And then they had purchased this property and she and her husband donated this land for this church to be, to be built.
again, you all being here this morning, and I hope you are having a good time. Do you know that we are preparing a wonderful uh, lunch today, and um, we would just like to uh, thank you again for coming. We appreciate the ministry that has been done here through uh, Pearl Carpenter and, and her family, and um, hearing God's call to begin a, a church over here in, in Rock Crusher, and, and I am blessed to be a part of this family here. And we do thank all of the men and their families who have served here in this congregation. And like I said, I know God has many, many more things planned for this for this family here. And so, uh, gentlemen, you may come back up and, and finish out for us, and uh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all in a hurry? Yeah. Hold, hold this for me. I'll be, I'll be Van. Yeah. Yeah. The definition of holding that means take it out of my hand. <laughs> New people. If, if, so y'all not in a hurry? No. We, we, remember, now folks, we got lunch back there. So you don't have to worry about beating the, the Baptist to go and pray. <laughs> And I got news for you, the Methodists are already there. <laughs> so, I'm not being done, but, uh, but no, we're not going to keep you long, but I want to tell you real quickly a couple of things we have um, on the table back there. And we'd love for you to, uh, this just eliminates a lot of questions that people have when they come by, you know, what song is on what CD and that kind of thing. Uh, we have our CD called Power. We've been singing a lot from that one today. Songs like Big Praise, More Like Jesus, Less Like Me. We'll do another one or two from this one here in just a few moments. Um, on My Cross, a uh, great song. It was one of our uh, top 40 songs. Uh, if you like the newer music we're doing, you're going to love that particular CD. We also have our worship CD. We've been singing a lot off this one today. This was, is our actual, well, not our technical newest, but we have, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay. Focus, Brad. I have ADD. And, uh, this, song, this has uh, a lot of modern worship songs like Blessed Be Your Name, uh, Your Love is Amazing, but it also has some classics like How Great Thou Art, the old hymn How Marvelous, a uh, song we did that Dustin sang earlier, Blessed Redeemer, with Oh How He Loves You and Me on there. If you like a good mixture of the old and new, uh, you're going to love this particular CD. It's a good one. We also have our newest CD. is actually a Christmas CD. Uh, we just finished this back in, uh, in November of last year. We got, out, got it out just in time for our Christmas uh, tour last uh, last December. That's usually when you do a Christmas tour. You know, <laughs> um, but this has a lot of classics on it. Like, uh, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, we've heard them high, but most of it is our brand new songs. And uh, so we're gonna, is it off if we do one from this here? <laughs> we're gonna do it anyway, no matter what. <laughs> but uh, our CDs are 15 each, any three for 40. You can also mix and match with some T-shirts and do any three items for 40. The only thing that excludes is what I'm, the CD I'm about to tell you about and also uh, the, uh, the, the hoodies that I'll tell you about in a minute. Josh has a solo CD, and I know you've enjoyed his piano playing, and uh, he's, he's a fantastic player, and, and he's not much of a guy, but he's a fantastic player. <laughs> But uh, if you like what he played earlier, uh, you're going you're to love this particular CD. He's got a lot of uh, old songs, new songs on here. Uh, but buy that. Those are $15 individually. Uh, they don't go in packages, but you can uh, you can take it home with you and enjoy Josh's piano playing. For 15 bucks, you can take that. Uh, we're going to sing a song here in a minute uh, that, that I dearly love. And I love this neat uh, cross that I found. It's an olive wood cross from the Holy Land. It's uh, has the Lord's Prayer on the back. It's on a 20, it was a 20 inch rope. It has a silhouette of Christ uh, carved out of the center of the wood. It's great. You can have one of those for $5 today if you'd like to take one of those home with you. Um, let me do, I'll do that last. Well, yeah, let me do that. Okay, do it now. He says. Yeah. Um, we also, uh, in addition to compassion, and I would encourage you, you all to, um, to pray about that if, if you would like to support compassion. Uh, we don't put our stamp of approval on something unless we know it's real and unless we know kind of some background about it. And uh, the highest rated child sponsorship organization, period, uh, because the bulk of the money, uh, the highest percentage in the industry goes directly to the child. It's not a bunch of inflated cost of advertising, that kind of thing. But we also help, uh, there's a, a, an organization called Threads of Hope, I'm still trying to remember this, um, that 
support that that supports. So I'm getting it. Just hang on. Here. I can't be pretty and smart. But, we, but it's called Threads of Hope, and it supports 600 families. They actually make these bracelets. You've seen the kids wearing these, and they make these bracelets. And this guy distributes them to artists like us that that uh, travel and, and have ministries. And the proceeds from the sale of these goes back to those 600 families. I think it's just a neat, neat, neat uh, organization that does this. You can have one of these for $3 or you can have two of them for 5 uh, So we have a bunch of different ones back there on the back, uh, on the table. So come out and take something, some of that home with you. There are two for 5 uh, 4 for 10 6 for 15 and 8 for 20 So that's our special. I'll get that later. We also have some, we also have some t-shirts back there. I love this one. It says, Faith, Hope, Love, and Child. But the greatest of these is love. So, uh, we got that one back there. All, the, all those are uh, 15. As I said, you can mix and match those with CDs. Any three items for 40. We also have some hooded sweatshirts. I know y'all get some really nippy weather here in Florida. <laughs> but uh, we, we have our God Mercy shirts. We have available in black and in pink. Uh, they're $25, so if you want to take one of those home with you, we have small through double extra large. I promised you a Christmas song, and here is our bluegrass Christmas song. See if you like it.
it's, it's a long way back to North Carolina. <laughs> now we have to ride with him. I love singing songs about the cross, and uh, this is quickly becoming my favorite song. I want you to listen to the words. South Carolina just to spend the day with her. And I would encourage you young people, if you if you 
you still got your grandparents, you need to spend as much time as you can. Because they may not be here tomorrow. And as the older I get, the faster I realize that life is better than ever. Here one minute and gone the next. So I spent the day with her. Got up the next morning, drove back to meet these guys to go sing. And I got a phone call from my mom. She said, where are you at? And I, I told her, I said, I'm on 85, headed north. And she said, can you turn around? I said, what happened? And she said, your grandmother was at the kitchen sink, cutting a chicken for Sunday dinner. And fell out, fell on the floor, and basically shattered her head. And they found out later she had a massive stroke. And I said all that to say this. It's not a pity party. It was a sad six months for our family just watching her slow decline. But I would constantly tell her, man, well, just wait till you get to the other side. And she said, you know what? I don't want a mansion. I said, I know, but you're going to get one. <laughs> and I miss just being able to pick up the phone and call her. But I know that I will see her again one day soon. And so I want to encourage you, whether you've lost a loved one, maybe you're dealing with a health issue. We meet so many people that have got cancer or are dealing with that battle. We want to encourage you. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the faith. The Lord has paid the ultimate price. And we need to do like Job has done. We need to do like my grandmother has done. We need to do like a little five-year-old boy that had terminal, terminal cancer in North Carolina has done. When the going gets tough, you just raise your hands. And you give God the praise. Because He's worthy. Even in our sorrows, He's worthy. Ages, faithful to a thousand generations, with hope that does not disappoint, and love that never fails. Even when the winds of doubt assail, oh, I choose to believe. Even in the sun.
for you this morning. If somebody put a gun in my head and said you had to do, you could only do one more song ever, what, what do you want to leave folks with? This would, without question, be that song. As I mentioned before, we do a lot of different styles of music. We do a lot of different uh, ages of music. We do old songs. We do new songs. And we don't do old songs for the sake of trying to appease someone. We do old songs because they're good. <laughs> and they, and, and, right? Right. I don't, I don't, sometimes don't, I'm not good at doing things to please people, sometimes I don't do that real well. But, uh, but we just do songs that, that minister to us. And as far as I know, for the past eight years, every time we have stepped on a platform, we have sung this song without question or without, uh, without, we've always done it. And um, I love telling the story about how this song came to be. It was written by a man named Horatio Spafford. Horatio was a very wealthy attorney who was heavily invested in the real estate market in Chicago. One day he began to see his world crumble right before his very eyes during the great Chicago fire. He lost it all. Everything he held dear as far as worldly possessions, his land, his property, everything gone, literally in the blink of an eye. Prior to that, Horatio had lost an infant son to scarlet fever. Two major blows in his life that would shake any man's faith. Shortly after the fire, his four remaining daughters and his wife boarded a ship traveling from the States over to England. They were going on a family vacation. Horatio stayed behind to handle some business affairs as a result of the fire. He was going to join them later. As his four daughters and his wife traveled across the Atlantic, they encountered rough seas. The ship they were traveling aboard tragically sank, killing all four of his daughters. His wife miraculously survived and sent home a telegraph to her husband that simply stated, saved alone. Can you imagine what he had to be going through in his heart? He quickly boarded another ship on his way to meet his wife just to try to pick up the pieces of his broken life. As he traveled across the Atlantic, you can imagine how long a journey that had to be anyway, but to have all the things on his mind that he had to be dealing with, all the struggles in his heart, he probably even questioned God, why is this happening to me? It's funny how God works. It's, as they passed over the very waters that they believed claimed the lives of his daughters, the captain alerted him. Horatio, through, I believe, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, took out a pen and begin to, begin to write down the words to what I think is the greatest song ever written. It is well with my soul. I want you to listen to the words of this song like you've never listened to them before. Oh 